staying with us. The South African Human Rights Commission is engaging various stakeholders. Uh, this is to find ways of tackling racism on social media. The commission is receiving submissions from the NPA, the police and uh, the Human Su Helen Sussman Foundation. This is on measures of how to punish hate speech. Uh, the commission's uh, spokesperson, Gershaw Brooks, uh, joins me in studio. Uh, thanks for coming in this afternoon, Gershaw. Uh, firstly, it's been, it looks like it's been quite uh, two, two days full of intense uh, discussions taking place. Well, what are some of the key thing, themes uh, that people have been raising? Look, I think you're very correct in saying that it has been very intense. And it's, 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 I just want to correct one notion. It's actually really an inquisitorial hearing as opposed to an adversarial hearing. So in other words, there's no one that's going to get into trouble based on this hearing. Um, the hearing is to look at social media and the impact of racism via the social media and to look at what the various players, what role the various players can play and obviously minimizing it. I don't think that we're necessarily going to ever expunge racism from our uh, society or the expression thereof. But surely we can't live in a society where uh, the South African Human Rights Commission receives 10 complaints via our social media platforms of people posting racist, homophobic, xenophobic, you name it. Um, statements via their social media. And I found it quite interesting that uh, the definition of what social media entails uh, for the context of this uh, inquiry, uh, you know, you, you, you haven't, it hasn't been very limited, it's quite broad, isn't it? It is, and it has to be. I mean, if you have to think about the various platforms that people interact on, and I think that there's also new developments on a regular basis. So obviously we have our traditional social media that we can name immediately, Facebook, Twitter. But then how, what role does um, uh, WhatsApp, for example, play? What role does Instagram play? And as you know, that social media is also... Um, has popularity amongst different age groups. So, you know, these are some of the things that also need to come into consideration. How, it is, how is it going to shape uh, how the Human Rights Commission deals with uh, some of the incidents of racism that we've seen? I mean, uh, a, a typical example, uh, the, the Rian Lucas thing that, that mm. came up last week, all of it via social media. How do you handle these complaints that are uh, for some people uh, very clear racism? Other people are thinking, well, it's a bit you know, it's uncouth, but maybe not racist. I think there's two things that we can take out of that. I mean, the Rian Lucas case is actually, uh, you know, a perfect example. I think the first thing that we need to look at is the fact that uh, here you had this meme pop up on social media. We received a complaint, actually a number of complaints. We started investigations. The media, as well as the South African Human Rights Commission, haven't been able to find this particular individual because the Facebook page has been shut down and this person just went quiet. That's the first thing. The second issue that we need to look at is that we have a clear definition of what would be construed as hate speech um, within that context or discrimination based on race. Um, you know, is it hurtful? Is it harmful? Is it an incitement? You know, um, is it one or all of those elements? And those are some of the things that we need to look at. And I think that if you look at posts like that and some of the posts that we've seen thus far, the penny sparrows of the world and so forth, uh, Vilapi Kumalo, it clearly highlights, you know, it meets those particular elements. Are we any closer to narrowing down the punishment for hate speech and racism, especially via social media? I don't think that there is a one-size-fits-all solution to this situation. I mean, if you look like at the case of Matthew Tennyson, um, you know, when we dealt with it as the South African Human Rights Commission, that was a conciliatory process which was settled through mediation because you had a respondent that was willing to apologize and understood the impact, the negative impact that he had on society. And I think that we should be appreciative of. Whereas on the other hand, you could have someone that's completely unrepentant and says, that, look, I put it out there and I fel felt that I could say and do as I pleased. And, and, and as a result, that, that's a person that you're going to take punitive action towards. So that's why, and I think that the, the major and the most important element of this is that South Africa needs to realize that we can't legislate away racism. You know, it's, it's something that we can't just take away with the stroke of a pen through a bill or through a particular p uh, set of laws. It is really something that, and this is what we're trying to do at the Commission, is through education, sensitization, and making people understand what this democracy was built, uh, built on. That 23 years later, we need to understand it was built on reconciliation and a society that's inclusive and accepting of the diversities that we have. How much closer do you think we are to a national uh, plan to combat racism? I know the President has spoken about it a number 
of times uh, in his mm. State of the Nation address that uh, the, there has been previous plans by the Human Rights Commission, you know, itself. But now that w 20 years later and some things have evolved, uh, are we going to see a, 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 a stay? Are we going to get to a stage where there is a clear plan of action of how this country is going to deal with issues of racism through uh, the, in the various sectors? So, I mean, if I can take one example, if we take it back to this uh, national hearing, this national investigative hearing in raci racism and social media, I mean, that is one of the small steps that we're taking, is what role do all the various players have, the social media companies themselves, civil society, government, as well as academics, and how do we coalesce and take this, all those different puzzle pieces and fit it together uh, so that we can actually effectively deal with this. I think it's basically eating an elephant, you know, one bite at a time. I don't think there's going to be a one-stroke-all solution. Uh, certainly going to be uh, a while then before we get to that, uh, the, the completion of eating this giant uh, elephant that stands uh, before us. The uh, Human Rights Commission spokesperson, Gershwal Brooks, in studio 